us to our top talker. Uh, we've, we're never one to scoff at a victory, and they're no. hard to come by. Right. And in the NFL, when you get them, you take them and you move on. You never, ever apologize for that. But um, I got to tell you, yesterday's 31-21 win over the Texans had some bumps in the road. It, it wasn't exactly a smooth ride for Browns fans. Yeah, when Baker Mayfield went down, oh, yeah. heart attack time. Well, our Mike Polk <laughs> watches every snap of every game from the edge of his seat. And here's his observations for our Week 2 win. Wah, I don't like how the Browns won that game yesterday. Wah, I expected more from this team. Wah, that was me being some of you. How soon they forget. Was it a pretty win yesterday? Not so much. But while it may indeed have been the Steve Buscemi of wins, it did have its moments. I can't say enough about how old number six played yesterday. What do you do when you don't have access to either of your superstar receivers? Well, if you're Baker, you adjust by spreading the ball around to your tight ends and finding other ways to make it work. And you go 19 of 21 for 213 yards and lead your team to a gritty, if not pretty, win. And of course, there were also some less positive aspects of the game. For example, the fact that Houston is a pretty abysmal team. And yes, there's the fact that their starting quarterback is Tyrod Taylor, who was already quite unremarkable back when the Browns had him when he was three years younger. It probably didn't help Houston when Taylor got injured and was replaced in the second half by rookie QB Daniel Mills, whose name is actually David Mills. But if I hadn't mentioned that, I'll bet almost none of you would have noticed. And that tells you something. The long and the short of it is, yes, Houston is a bad team, and it shouldn't have been that close. But the team that was supposed to win the game won the game. And that, for once, was us. Now, was it one for the ages that we'll be sharing fond memories of many years from now? No. But it was a win. And I can't believe I have to remind some people of this, but winning games is a relatively new phenomenon around here. Show the clip from the 0-16 parade again. Where do we want? Watch more football. When do we want it? Now. Please recall that until very recently, it was usually the Browns who were the scrappy underdog organization that would at times overperform for a half before ultimately collapsing in the end. Examples. November 18th, 2012, the Browns lead 13 to nothing at halftime at Cowboys Stadium, only to be outscored 20 to seven in the second half. Browns lose by three. December 8th, 2013, amazingly, the Browns lead the Patriots in Foxborough, 26 to 14, at the two minute warning before Tom Brady scores two unanswered touchdowns for the win. That one still haunts my dreams. And having experienced both the scrappy loss and unimpressive victory options, I tend to favor the latter, which is why I believe I'm able to fully appreciate the boundless beauty of such an ugly win. And it should be noted that in each of those games from yesteryear that I mentioned in which the Browns build up and then relinquish a comfortable lead, I was never granted even one moment of peace or confidence that we were actually not going to blow it and lose. I compared that to yesterday when despite starting slow and looking pretty bad, I never had any real doubts that we were going to win because the better team usually does. For the first time in a long time, Time, that's us. And we're just going to have to get used to the idea of winning in all of its various incarnations. On to the next one, folks. This is Mike Polk basking in a hideous victory for three news.